beautiful. Let's do this. Give a hand to the Lord. Yeah. Just to remind you now that the colors in place, as you see the green, that you're mindful, mindful of the eternal nature of God, that He has provided for our eternity uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the red. Uh, the lights, I think, will become more apparent toward the end of the service uh, with some different things that take place. I'm reminded, I forgot to say about gold, also speaks that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that you'll see gold uh, as a part of the Christmas decorations as well. And I just love the different things of the Christmas uh, ornaments. It's so uh, awesome and what that means uh, on the Christmas tree. So we're very thankful. And uh, this crew is coming over to Debbie's my house this afternoon and going to do it in a similar way, lining everybody up, bringing it's going to be glorious. So uh, that's going to be a great time this afternoon. We can only wish. Uh, and in the Gospel of Matthew, in the uh, third chapter, we read about John the Baptist. In the days John the Baptist came, in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and he was saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. And then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, and they were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Let's pray. Lord, I pray just that right now our hearts would be prepared and ready just as the sanctuary has been decorated and it's prepared for the Advent season. And Lord, that you would speak by your spirit and that we would have ears to hear and hearts to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season of preparation uh, as we prepare our hearts, our minds, and our lives to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, the Savior of the world. What an amazing, precious gift God has given to us in His Son, Jesus. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a foundational tenet of our Christian faith. And God sent John the Baptist ahead of Jesus to help prepare the way for Jesus. John the Baptist was preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And through his preaching, he was attempting to prepare the way for the Lord and to make straight his path. John the Baptist then also baptized Jesus. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he then declared, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And what a, what a powerful declaration of Jesus and his coming ministry that he would fulfill by his life and his death and his resurrection. Advent, a season of preparation, making things ready. It makes me think about preparing for company. Okay? And, and I want to tell you, I need you to pray for me right now because you ever heard the thing about asking for permission or asking for forgiveness? Right? Mm -hmm. Well, with Debbie today, I'm taking the route of asking for forgiveness. So pray for our afternoon today. Okay? I didn't ask her permission. Uh, and, 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 I, and so like, I'm, I knew I'm, I'm just pray for me while I'm telling the story. Okay? All right? Debbie, Debbie lives uh, where she has loves to do hospitality. Okay? But she also has a very demanding job as a nurse, and she works just a lot. And so that puts a cramp in the style sometimes of hospitality. And there was a time when I wanted to invite some of the college couples from Crossroads. There were some married couples that were college students that attended Crossroads, and I wanted to have them over for lunch. But Debbie was working a lot, and so she wasn't going to be able to make the house you know, as ready as she would normally like to make her company, and I told her, Debbie, you got to understand, these are college you know, couples. They live in married housing at Laterno. Have any of y'all ever seen the little, tiny married houses? They live in little, tiny you know, married housing, or they live in little apartments. They will just be blessed to come in you know, to a home and to, to have a meal. And so it doesn't have to be all fancy or extra prepared. Because it's just, you know, college couples. And they'll just be blessed to be in our home. And so Debbie, you know, kind of let her guard down just a 
just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit of what the house might normally be if we're having company. Well, there were about four or five college couples that were going to come over that day. Uh, but as I got to church, one of those college couples came to me and said, hey, we've ended up, we've had another obligation. You know, we won't be able to come and we're sorry. And so they made their excuses out of it. Well, that Sunday, there was a guy, a businessman, that I played basketball with, and I knew him really well. And he and his wife visited our church for the first time. And his wife's name was Kathy, and I knew that Debbie and Kathy would just hit it off. And so I thought, what a great opportunity. That one couple is not able to come, and so I can invite Charles and Kathy to come at their place. Seemed like a, just a natural thing to me, you know. And in the busyness of the morning, in the busyness of the morning, I forgot to tell Debbie about that exchange. Okay? So Debbie and I are in our, our breakfast room. In our breakfast room, you can see the driveway. And Debbie and I are making some preparations. The college couples, there may even be a couple of them already there, but we're in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, a Cadillac Escalade pulls in our driveway. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell Debbie about Charles and Kathy coming. And Debbie stands there for a minute, and she's just processing, and she's, who is that? Probably, you know, she probably said, well, dear, I wonder who that is. You know, maybe that's how she said it. But, but, but I knew I was in serious trouble. I mean, I got it like, well, who is that? And, and there was this look that if she didn't have a knife in her hand, I can tell you the look cut like a knife. And I realized in that moment that my life is in a grave danger. Okay? And so, like, in that moment, you think, where is the safest place I can be? And I think the safest place I can be is to hurry outside and to get close to Charles and Kathy because if she tries to kill me, I got witnesses. <laughs> so me and Bo I said, well, that's a friend of mine, Charles. I played basketball with him and his wife, Kathy, and there was a couple that could have done, so I thought maybe they should come. And then I'm, I'm moving. I'm getting the way I'm out the door to get by Charles and Kathy to welcome them into our home. our messy home, that I had, I had kind of talked Debbie into lowering our standard because it was only college couples, and then a Cadillac Escalade pulled in, and this successful businessman and his wife get out to come in to our lunch. I'm so thankful I'm still married. <laughs> and, and it is a testimony to the grace of God at work in Debbie's heart and her life. And this is just one of many stories like that. But but in my yeah, I know, sorry, Debbie. But 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 I will tell you, I told this story because there's kind of levels of company. And, and in our homes, you know, if it's just a if it's a good friend, you know, we straighten up a little bit, you know. But if it's somebody special, then there's just extra work that's required to get everything done. And and I had messed up because I'd invited a one of those extra special couples into our house, you know, for the first time on, on one of the occasions that I talked Debbie into a less than special, you know, situation. And, and, and then the question comes to us, what kind of company is Jesus? Okay? What kind of company is Jesus? And, and today, you know, there was much ceremony, there was much ado of making the sanctuary, making our church ready for our Lord and Savior because He is special company. Okay? And so, so we want to, to, to have that in our mind that Jesus is special company. Okay? And, and so one of the things we want to do, you know, just here in decorating our church what we are doing is we are making preparations to welcome the presence of Jesus. And, and I want to say that too, not just Jesus, but the presence of Jesus upon this church. 
Um, one of the best compliments that, 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 that somebody could pay is somebody was talking about the church here and their first time they attended. And they said, one thing's happened, I just walked in the door and I felt the presence of God. And, and I want to tell you that, that there's a price that has to be paid in prayer and in worship and in welcoming the presence of Jesus in for, for that to be the case. And, and even a part of decorating the sanctuary, that's not the deal is decorating the sanctuary. The deal is preparing this place for the presence of Jesus. And it would be real easy to walk in and say, oh man, that's nice. That's so pretty. Look at the decorations. And they're beautiful. But the point is, we're preparing the place for the presence of Jesus. And so even now, Lord Jesus, we invite you in to this church, to this sanctuary, to our prayer room. Lord, we invite you in because you're special company. With our homes. Maybe we're about to think about starting decorating our homes. I, last year, I think I was a little bit of the Greeks last year, and I didn't do well, and I didn't like how that went, and I want to do better. So I've already gone and got the Christmas tree, and you know it's ready to be decorated. And I want this year to do a better job of being in the heart and the spirit of Christmas as we decorate our home. And then I want to be decorating our home, not just for the beauty of decorating our home. I love the Christmas tree. Again, I talked about lights are one of my favorite things about Christmas, and our Christmas tree is one of our favorite things. Debbie does an amazing job decorating our Christmas tree. And I hate to say it that way, but that's kind of how it is. Uh, I'm pretty miserable on that too. So she does an amazing job of decorating our Christmas tree, and I love that. But, but decorating our homes, it should be more than just making our homes pretty and decorated. It should be making our homes ready for the presence of Christ at Christmas. So the very same things, when we see the colors you know, in our homes, in our decorations, we should just be mindful of, of the very same things that we have said about these colors at our church and that, that we should be making them ready. Yesterday, as we were leaving Dallas, our son Brett has decorated his apartment. And, and with Christmas, he has his Christmas tree. And man, I, I felt like we were special company too yesterday. The way his apartment was really clean and it looked awesome. And, and, and I just felt like we were special company. But, but Brett loves Christmas and he has decorated his apartment. And, and I pray for him that's in decorating in a way that, that's inviting the presence of Jesus in our homes. I, I, I'm, I missed something that, that I just want to, to go back to for our church. It's in your sermon notes, but I want to go back because inviting the presence in is more than just the decoration. Because also, like, in the way we invite God in is not only through the decorations, but through prayer, through praising and worshiping God, through loving service, through making God's Word a priority in our lives. Our Bible study these next two Wednesdays, we've been looking at the names of God, and we're going to look at those names related to Christmas. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, that's going to be our Bible study over these next two weeks, is looking at those names of God that are related to the Christmas season and out of that verse from Isaiah. So, making the word a priority, these are ways that we prepare the way of the Lord in our church, okay? But then I would also, when we talk about our homes, to think about what are some of the ways that we can invite God into our homes. The Advent candle, you can get little Advent you know, wreaths for your house and, and light those. Just you know, from time to time, light the candle. And because next week we'll light this candle, then the, the candle, the candle of faith, this candle, then the, the, the candle that's you know, right before Christmas. And this candle is lit on our Christmas Eve service. In our Christmas Eve service, the light that goes on our candlelight will come from that. So there's things we'll do here at the church. But we can also take those into our home as well. Now here's our last thing today. So this is the biggest one to me because it makes all the difference even here in our church. In our hearts and in our minds and in our lives, we want to make sure that we're preparing ourselves and welcoming the presence of Christ 
into our lives. We're not just wearing Christmas colors. Have any of y'all ever attended one of the ugly sweater you know, parties? You know, uh, you know, we're not finding yeah, Dave's got one that can win just about every time. Don't wear it, please. I, I might, yeah, this maybe on the choir can taught a Sunday, so it wouldn't distract me that day. Maybe that one. Um, but you know, sometimes we like intentionally wear our ugly. I like I, I debated what I talked about is because somebody have a Christmas sweater. They're all beautiful today. Uh, right. But if you've ever been to the one of the parties, you know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, wearing your Christmas colors, going through the Christmas routines. But we want to make sure that we're also preparing our hearts and our minds, our lives, for welcoming Christ into our lives. And, and what are some of the ways we can do that? I put that in your sermon notes just to pray through ways that we prepare. Jesus is special company. And, and prepare the way of the Lord. And, and I want you to know that I've had different Christmases. Like last Christmas was one of the worst for me. Of, of really preparing my heart and my mind to celebrate Christmas. And, and one of the things for me this year, I'm more determined than ever this year, because I, I mean, it was just a bomb. Like, you know, it was a, wasn't a good Christmas. And I want this Christmas to be better. And a lot of that starts at the very beginning by how I go into the season. I have a list, 10 things I love about Christmas, and I have a list, 10 things I don't like about Christmas. And you know, it's so weird because we almost like choose which list we live out of. And that we can just start seeing all the things we don't like and it turns negative. And I kind of had one of those last year. But I also have a list of things I like about Christmas. And we make the season. But it's about welcoming the presence of Jesus into our lives. Prepare the way of the Lord. And I'm trying to do a better job of that this year for my life. When Jesus came to earth, there was no room for Mary and Joseph at the end. Because John the Baptist came to prepare the way of the Lord, and he did the best that he could do. But actually, when Jesus came, the world wasn't really ready. There was no room for them at the end. The, the, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, weren't ready because they... We're looking for a different kind of Messiah. The political groups and the Pharisees, they were looking for a different type of Messiah. And so they weren't ready. They missed, they missed one of the most significant events of history. Something that they were looking for. But they missed it. Because they had a different idea of who Jesus would be and what the Messiah would be. How will it be for us today? This year? Is there room for Jesus in our church? Is there room for Jesus in our homes? Is there room for Jesus in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives? How will it be for us today? Are we so busy giving God our agendas and our prayer time? I'm going to talk about that when we pray, really, we're just giving God our agenda for Him, you know, what we want Him to do. Or are we waiting before the Lord? That's pretty much what the Jews were doing with the Messiah. They had an agenda. They had given the agenda to God. But if God gave them an agenda, they pretty much missed it. So are we listening and taking the time to listen so that God can give us His agenda and that we can experience His presence? I pray that we can slow down this Christmas season that we can welcome the presence of Jesus. When special company comes, we try to make things special. But wouldn't it be weird if then we made things special, and then when they arrive, we kind of tell them to sit over in the corner? Hey, just sit over there. we still got stuff to do. We're busy. And then we just went on doing whatever we did. And our special company just sat over in the corner, watching us do what we do would be very special, would it? No, when special company comes, we stop and we give them attention and we spend time with them. Prepare the way of the Lord. We need to celebrate
celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to welcome his presence and give him our attention in our church, in our homes, and in our personal lives. And that's my prayer for us for this Christmas season. That we will experience fresh anew the presence of Christ. The gift of God to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And the world is not the same because of the birth and the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We're going to continue in our worship uh, right now with the uh, lighting of the sanctuary.